Okay, thank you so much for attending another edition of Thunderdome. Okay, uh, follow along 8.1 part one quiz. We're going to go through half of this PowerPoint today, half tomorrow. Stay with me. All right, so we are entering now uh, personal finance literacy, which pretty much is how to manage your own money. Um, so things that you might know already, but things that you definitely need to know as an adult. So, true or false, teens get most of their money from a part-time job. Sadly, that's false. 55% of teens report getting money from parents, guardians, 43% from gifts, 28% from odd jobs, 25% from part-time jobs, 21% from allowance, 6% from full-time job, and 2% from their own business. So even though you might be a person who actually has a part-time job and who makes money uh, for their own most, most teenagers don't really experience the same thing. True or false? Most teens who are 18 or 19 years old have a checking account. True. 64% of teens 18 and 19 years old have a checking account. Um, still, that's kind of a low number, though. 64% really isn't as much as I thought it would be. All right, true or false? 90% uh, of high school students rely on their parents for information about money. True, you know. Uh, pretty soon there's going to be a class called personal finance, and it'll be mandatory to take. It'll be a social studies class, so that'll be an interesting thing to see. Um, all right, true or false? On average, American teens spend less than ten billion dollars a year. False. Recent surveys showed that American teen spending exceeded one hundred sixty-nine billion dollars in one year. So teens do spend money, maybe just money that they get from their parents or maybe money that they got from part-time jobs. All right, so let's get through it. Uh, what is financial planning? Uh, financial planning is pretty simple, cut and dry definition. A process of setting goals, developing a plan to achieve them, and putting the plan into action. That's pretty simple. But there are five steps to creating and maintaining a financial plan. So this is going to be question number one. We'll go through these five steps. Step one is set goals. So goal setting with regards to financial planning involves thinking about needs and wants in the short, intermediate, and long term. There's this thing called SMART goals. They, this is pushed on teachers a lot to use SMART goals. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So those, that, that is, if you can set a goal according to those specific parameters, then you might have a good high chance of achieving them because you'll get to see uh, what you're doing. Um, so needs and wants. Um, needs are very basic things we must have to survive. If you've ever heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, at the bottom rung it's basically the things that you need to survive, which would be just air, uh, water, food, not shelter. You do not need shelter to, to survive, right? That's like in the second rung. Um, and all, you know, so food, shelter, clothes. I know it says shelter right here, and that's probably a need for what we're talking about. Um, but but um, Maslow is basically saying these are the things that you need to actually just live. Uh, once uh, things that make life more interesting and fun, but you could live without them if you had to. Designer clothes, going out to eat, TV, your cell phone. Which is funny, and I give my age away whenever I say cell phone. Because what is it to you guys? It's just your phone. Okay? Um, so, you know, those are, those are you know, the differences between needs and wants. Um, goals. Uh, Short-term goal is less than three months. Okay? Intermediate is three months to a year. And a long-term goal is a year or longer. Delayed gratification is pretty simple to understand. It is... You delay gratification, so you give up something you want now to get something better in the future. That, that could be time, that could be money, that could be whatever. You know, you set aside money to get what you want. So, you know, maybe you want to save up for a PlayStation 5 or whatever it is. You would have to delay that gratification a little bit if you didn't have the means to buy it in that moment. Instant gratification, buying something as soon as you see it. Now, you could use something here, and we'll talk about this later. Credit cards. That's money that you don't have. It's actually borrowed money. 
So you use the credit card, you buy the PlayStation, and then you pay back that amount of money plus interest, which is, that's the kicker. So a PlayStation that costs $5.99, if you buy it with a credit card, in the long run, it might actually cost you That'd be with just tax. You're, we're talking about maybe eight hundred, nine hundred dollars. That's why. Like. Yeah. Um, so that's the difference between the two. We live in a world of instant gratification. All right. Uh, step two: analyze information. So find out where your finances currently stand. Right. That's the first step. Measure your cash flow. See how much is coming in. Um, how much you're spending. How much you're saving. Um, income is obviously money received and expenditures is money spent. Um, income can come from several different places, parents, part-time job, odd jobs, um, you know, selling thing on, things on Facebook Marketplace, something like that. Expenditures obviously money spent. I think a lot of people your age specifically spend money on food. I don't know why, but when I was your age I wanted, that's what I did. I went and bought McDonald's and all that kind of stuff all the time. Um, so, uh, step three is make decisions. So, six decision making steps. Identify the goal, establish your criteria, identify your expectations in advance. Um, whenever your actual behaviors don't meet your expectations, it kind of hurts the human. The human hates that. Uh, examine your options, weigh pros and cons. That's a good decision making strategy. Um, uh, make your decision which option best meets your criteria. Evaluate your results. Did you make the right choice? Was your choice worth the cost? Because every single decision that you make, there's something all right, called an opportunity cost at the back end of it. You actually had to decide not to do this other thing to get this one thing that you wanted. Sometimes you don't even know what that is. You know? So you're like, you, an opportunity cost of making good grades would be like watching less TV. So, you get what I'm saying there? Evaluate results, okay. Uh, decision making involves a trade-off known as opportunity cost, which I just explained. All right, steps four and five together. Create and implement a plan, and then monitor and modify the plan, because that's what happens. Plans change. You could 100% have a plan ready to go, and then you're going to have to modify it a little bit pretty much every time that happens. Make sure you're staying on track. Review the plans uh, and, and, and the progress that you're making. The plans are not set in stone, and they could easily change. You know, the last uh, time that I could remember doing this is uh, I wanted a new car. Um, we had a plan in place. that We would uh, pay off my wife's car before I got a new car. Um, she did a huge catering job and got paid um, a pretty big chunk of money and uh, that expedited the plan. I could buy the car and then we could pay off her car all in one moment. All right, so it's like really quickly, okay, that's right, we can do this now and the plan changed but the goal is the same, okay? All right, um, so the answer for number one should be pretty simple, even though that's what I'm trying to do with TikTok. All right, um, so personal finance literacy, let's talk about checking. Um, so why would you open a checking account? It's pretty easy to understand if you know anything about it. Um, safety, you don't walk around with a lot of cash. If you lose cash, guess what happens? Can't get it back. Can't get it back. All right, ATM cards slash checks can be replaced pretty easily. Um, if I lost mine today, I could go to the bank and get one immediately. That's how fast I, it, it could happen. Now, a lot of people make a claim in the mail and then they have to wait and blah, 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 but you could go get it immediately. Convenience, you don't need cash, so you can buy anything um, with your debit card or checks. Uh, so don't need cash. Bad idea to send cash in the mail, which is so true. You should just send a check. Because if it never gets there, then you don't lose that money. Easy access to your account. All right, that's that's definitely simply known now because of online banking. 
Easier budgeting, so you track spending with a check register. Not a lot of people do this anymore. Except for, I don't know if your parents do or not. They have a check register. They actually, in their checkbook, they write down everything that they spend. Do they still do that? You guys know? A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people just use online banking now. Uh, proof of payment. Clear checks are a record of payment. This is huge. What if you need to prove that you've actually paid for something? Your checking account's going to let you do that. Um, that's the question. That's question number two. And then less impulsive spending. Cash in your pocket is too easily spent. Well, I've got cash in my pocket right now, and guess what I want to do with it? I want to buy a 20-piece nugget. But I'm going to stop myself. All right. Opening a checking account. So things to consider when opening a, opening a checking account is really the bank. Um, so um, things to consider, location, uh, branch offices, hours of operation, ATMs. Um, you know, I use Wells Fargo and then two credit unions. Um, so I, I've got several different banks, but you know, which one I use for my actual checking account is Wells Fargo. And they just have more ATMs around than everybody else. So you can have different banks, like yeah, you can have several different accounts in several different banks. Uh, fees, monthly fees, per check fees, printing of checks, balance inquiry fees, ATM fees. Uh, again, you use the wrong ATM card at uh, a certain bank location, and you get charged for that three dollars and ninety-five cents. If I use my Wells Fargo card at an ATM. It was not Wells Fargo, it would cost me more money to do so. Uh, overdraft charges, stop payment fees, certified check fees, uh, some restrictions, We've got minimum balance, deposit insurance, holding period for deposited checks, and then special features, um, direct deposit, which is what a lot of people use these days. I have that, so every, at the end of every month, my check is directly deposited into my banking account. I don't have to do anything, it's just there. Um, automatic payments, that's pretty simple. Um, overdraft protection, let's say you spend more money than you have. The bank will actually give you $100 if that's the case, and they will protect you from overdrafting, which would mean you've spent more money than you had in your bank account. And then all of a sudden you have $100 in the bank, but guess what you owe the bank now? That's right, 100 bucks. So uh, online banking, which is absolutely amazing these days. Discounts or free checking for students, which you guys should know. If you do sign up right now, it's pretty much free. Um, seniors or employees of certain companies get uh, privileges as well. Um, what do you need to open a checking account? Uh, two forms of ID. Any money that you want to deposit, you get. If you can't just open a checking account, you actually have to put money in it yeah, the yeah, first day. Uh, yeah. Um, so I think it, it, for different banks, it's different amounts. Um, you got to fill out the paperwork and then receive a box of checks uh, and register in the mail, which a lot of people don't even use checks that much anymore. But um, all right. Oh, wrong button. Uh, check do's and don'ts. Do's, always write checks in ink. That'd be silly if you wrote it in pencil because somebody could change it, you know? You write a check, they could change the amount, and then all of a sudden you wrote a check for $2,000 when you re really wrote it for $20. Uh, keep unused checks in a place where others will not have easy access to them. Uh, I remember growing up, um, I, somebody got arrested for check fraud um, and it was funny because nobody even knew what that was. I was young, like your age. Nobody even knew what that was. And then we found out that they stole their friends' parents' checks and wrote themselves checks to get money. So they got arrested for that. You can tell I don't know. I think, I think the bank actually probably took care of it insurance-wise, but I don't know. They definitely, they, they got, 
I don't know what kind of trouble they got. They were, they were young. They were under 18, so I'm not quite sure if they got like legitimately charged or maybe they used a prayer for judgment. Um, check your statement regularly because the bank can mess up. Uh, write checks for money you don't have. Guess what that's called? Bouncing a check. You might have seen signs on some place. Like at Harris Teeter, there's signs that like for every bounced check, there's a $25 fee. So, um, this is question number three. Then endorse the check, uh, sign the back if you plan on depositing it later. You have to do that to deposit it. Uh, all right, so moving on, ATM checks, debit cards. Um, your debit card is an alternative to writing checks. Less to carry around, faster transactions. Some of the cons is you have to memorize and protect your PIN number. A lot of people will try to steal that at gas stations. Um, reporting lost or stolen cards, um, it's kind of a hassle. Uh, but one of the pros to having a debit card would be um, less to carry around. So there you go, question number four. Um, all right, managing your money. Let's talk about this. So you are a consumer if you buy things, right? Um, I just bought a Google Chromecast the other day, so there you go, I'm a consumer of Google. Um, so I'm someone who buys a product or service. Uh, to enter into any profession or business in which you're interested, uh, to buy the products and brands that you like and to reject others. That's what a consumer does, okay? Spend money, you earn as you wish, so you have disposable income, money remaining after all the taxes have been paid, needs. So you paid your needs, okay? Discretionary income, uh, money remaining after paying for necessities. And that's when you can get your wants. So disposable income helps you kind of survive and live, and discretionary income is the extra stuff that you'd like to buy, like a Google Chromecast. Um, who's protecting you as a consumer? Um, you know, let the buyer beware is something that people, I don't know. You know, can people dupe you? Can, so, can they sell you something that doesn't necessarily work? Oh, yeah. They can, but you can take action because of that. So consumerism, a movement to educate buyers and demand better slash safer products. So we'll look at some congressional laws here. We got the Fair Packaging and Labeling Act. You have to label it correctly. Okay, you have to package it well. Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, make sure that everything is uh, up to par with certain standards ethically, what they've been made with, or, um, you know, oh, best buy dates. You get what I'm saying with that? So it's like best used by, that has something to do here with food, drug, cosmetic, pure food, and drug act. But the only private group really that is really concerned with protecting the consumer is the Better Business Bureau. A lot of people get in contact with the Better Business Bureau um, to kind of voice their you know, disgruntled interaction with a small business or maybe even uh, you know, a large corporation. Um, but um, it's one of the avenues that you can take as a consumer to say, hey, I don't feel like you sold me the right product or service. All right? So the Better Business Bureau is the private <clears throat> group or organization that protects consumers. Uh, consumer Bill of Rights, pretty simple. Right to a safe product, right to be informed, right to choose, right to be heard. And right to redress. Now, there used to be a sign that used to hang up in McDonald's uh, here in Wilmington. And it said, the customer is always right. Is that true? No, it isn't. Now, do you 
if you are employed at a place, yeah, you want to treat the customer with respect, but the customer isn't always right. So, um, the customer is sometimes wrong, that's what we should say. Uh, so the, customer, uh, the, the consumer bill of rights contains the statement, the customer is always right, and that is false. Um, all right, consumer responsibility, smart buying strategies, uh, gather information, use advertising carefully because obviously advertising wants you to buy. Decide where to buy, which is a pretty interesting thing. Um, I bought a Nintendo Switch for my kid for Christmas, and GameStop had the best deal. Okay, had $100 off, you got some like weird percentage off of a uh, used game after you bought it. Um, and what else? There was something else. Oh, it came with a game and the actual like controller thing that the, the Nintendo Switch is used whenever you want to play it, like a PlayStation, I guess. Had the best deal. So I went to GameStop and I bought it there. Okay, so comparison shopping is real. Now you have to do it online and in person sometimes. Uh, brand name versus generic products. Um, it's like, uh, ooh, hey, here we go. I wanted AirPods forever, and guess what? I got some. They're called Jive Mini Pods, not AirPods. Do they work exactly the same? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to I was laughing at my job in many pots. Um, but yeah, they work just the same. Um, balance costs and benefits of alternative buying methods, obviously, how are you going to buy it? Report faulty problems um, or faulty products and then make fair complaints. Uh, so those are the responsibilities of the consumer. Um, making buying decisions, decide whether or not to buy an item. You've got two resources involved here, time and income. Uh, and if you can do, you know, if you can save money to buy something, then cool, uh, you know, good for you. That, I think you, it's weird. You can do that a lot whenever you're younger, and then as soon as you get a family and other responsibilities, it's just go, everything goes straight to that. Um, I always make a joke. It's like, you know, right now, everything in this world kind of costs you 20, 30 bucks. You want to go get something to eat, you want to go somewhere, you want to do something, see a movie, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually that changes. And everything costs $100. And then everything else, I mean, it's so crazy. I mean, the more responsibilities you have, it seems like the prices just keep on getting higher and higher. Um, all right, I think we're done here. So I do believe we are finished. Hit me with the theme song.